Welcome to part three of our isometric learning series. I'm working in a program called AbbeyCAD, which is our standalone product, which has MetQ in it. So it's a product that we sell for those that don't have AutoCAD or CAD and or for those just getting started with CAD as well. And we also offer a beginning CAD class for those users. I'll leave you a link to that in the video description below. So in this lesson, I'm going to just finish up the drawing, do some annotations, add the bill materials, and then we'll just do a final plot preview. We need to add the Arial font to our MetQ utility. So in order to do that, I provided a download to the Arial font. Now you want to explore to your documents folder and then add a folder called fonts and then copy the Arial font in there. Now you could go to your Windows font folder, but that folder is sometimes really hard to get to because it's a hidden folder. So I find that this is an easier way and also allows you to keep track of all your custom fonts. So once you've done that, then you can type the MQ CFG and then click on text and font. And there's a little right arrow here. Just click on this and then browse to that same folder. Go to the documents folder here, click on fonts, come down to the bottom here where it says files of type and choose TTF and then click Arial and then choose open. For our text height, we're using a 0.125. So I'll go ahead and put that in there. For metric users, you can use a 2.5. And then click OK. Now we need to add a path to that font. So type in OP for options. Click on File, Support Paths here. Then Support Paths. And then come down to Fonts. And here you can see I've added the folder to that same font folder that I just showed you. You would just click here, choose add, and then browse again to that same folder. Don't replace the systems folder like I did here. You wanna just add one underneath the existing folder. So once you've done that, let's go ahead and run a bill of materials. So let's go back into the ISO utility and choose bomb options. And make sure that all these are unchecked except the last one here. And choose OK. And then down here is where your bomb is. So click this. These are all sort of optional except this one. This is the global option. So make sure this is clicked on. And also the two drawing is clicked on. This builds the table in a downwards direction. And this installs the table at the upper left corner. Leave all these settings here alone because these are all multiplied by the dim scale factor. And remember in our drawing, it's set to 0.7. So it's gonna take these values and then it's gonna multiply them by that. Choose to create bomb. This is gonna take a couple of minutes. So go grab a snack or a cup of coffee. <laughs> and then I'll also pause the video at this point. So MetQ wants us to insert the table. So let's come down here underneath and do that. So we'll just click here and that's gonna generate the table there. Let's have a look at it. So we have the elbows, T's, flanges, check valves, ball valves, bolts, pump. They're all quantified here along with an item number. So let's set the layer to the table and then draw a line here at the top to just sort of finish it off. Now let's start to bubble our drawing based on these item numbers. I'm just gonna do a few here to speed the video up a little bit. These are both multi-liter styles. So if we go under the MLS command, you'll be able to see the bubble one and the standard one dash one. These are the two styles you're seeing. So let's double click on the double one to activate it and then close. And then we'll create a couple of call outs here. So it's MLD for multi-leader. We'll left click. 
will come up this way. Notice how my cursor is in the right view and ortho is also on. So left click and then enter and then type in the number one. Let's just do that once again. We'll just repeat the command. Let's come down here to this pump here. And we'll just label this pump. Press enter and then type the number seven in. For this one, we can just copy from here to here and then double click on it and then put the tag number of two in. So that's another way of doing it. So now let me just annotate using this symbol here. I'm just going to turn off my ortho here and I'm just going to just point it to the wall and I'll just type in wall. Now, another way of doing that is to use MetQ. So if we type in the ISO pipe utility and we've got the left grid active, let's choose ISO text. We'll just put in some text here. And this will be flat, so we'll just press enter. We'll type in wall penetration. Press enter. And we'll exit. And now we have that notation, but as you see, it is isometric. We can scale this up a little bit as well, make it match the other one, and then move it. And now I'm going to show you how to use the multi leader. So if we check our styles with the MLS command and double click on this one and close and go into our left view, type in MLD. And then here we can just choose the intersection here, come down. And at this point, we don't want to put in any text. We just escape. And then we can just move this down like so. We could take this notation and we could just copy it up to, let's say, our tank location. And we'll just put one down here at our well location. It's easy to modify these. We just double click on them and then we simply just overwrite, do a control A, delete, and then just start typing in our note. And then we just move it in with the grip. We'll just call this the well location. We just left click out of it and then just move it in. Let me show you how to use these arrows. So we just simply click on it, do the copy command, and then just copy these in. We'll do this one as well. Notice how this one is going the wrong direction. We can easily fix that. Let's toggle into the right view with the F5 key and make sure our ortho is on and click it, select it by the grip, and then just pull that to the other side and then move that in like so. We can get rid of this part of the arrow if we want. Just click on it, do the explode command, and then erase that part there. So click X and then erase. So let me show you how to dimension. I'm going to dimension the spacing between all these pipe runs. So we'll go into the ISO pipe utility again. We'll click on ISO dim. It's wanting the first extension line origin. Let's just place it here. And then the second extension line will be here. And the dimension location itself will be here. Then we just type in the dimension. It's wanting to continue on, so we'll just snap here and then type in three foot six inches. Then again down here, three foot dash six inches. And then press enter. So now let's just do a quick plot preview. So plot here. I'm checking sheet size is A3, which is near 11 by 17. And I can choose window for my what to print. I need to specify the print area. So I'll zoom up and I'll just do a window here. Keep in mind that this is not to scale. I'm not really messing with viewports or anything at this point. Make sure that the monochrome here is selected and then just do a preview. So that completes the series on ISO piping. So in this lesson, we learned how to use MetQ to do some of our annotation. I gave you a download to the Arial 
font type and we install that into MetQ. Through the MetQ config, we also set our text size to an eighth of an inch. Then lastly, we added the path to the options menu through the support file search path and adding the font folder in there as well. Then we went ahead and created a bill of materials using the global option, which selected all our fittings. Then we added some bubble locations using the multi-leader styles that I created. And then using a plain text multi-leader, we annotated another piece. And then with MetQ, we used the isotext utility to put in some isometric text in a couple of locations. I also showed you how to add flow direction arrows in our drawing. And then lastly, we dimensioned a few of the pipe runs. Lastly, we did a, a plot preview and we printed the drawing by window by selecting the area that we want to plot on our A3 sheet. I hope you liked the video. It's actually a free sample taken from a online CAD course that I'm currently teaching called Shortcut CAD. There'll be about nine hours of in-depth teaching available for beginner CAD users or for users just wanting to improve their CAD skills. And all the videos are lifetime, so you can view them whenever you wish. So check that out using the link here or in the YouTube description below.